for your book. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have a special interview with a uh, Hallmark author that we are talking with author Robin Jones Gunn today. And I'm film director Rachel Wagner and Jess is here. Hey guys. And Robin, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Sure. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, what people might not know behind the scenes is this uh, is the most spontaneous author podcast that interview that we've ever had. <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Can we tell them why? Or yeah, them let's busy? do. Uh, <laughs> we, we were going to interview, and hopefully we can reschedule with Melody Carlson. We we're going to interview her about her new book. And you were kind enough because she was getting evacuated because it's 2020 and things are insane. <laughs> you were kind enough to join to join in her place and to do the interview. So thank you. That's so nice of you. Well, I'm glad to do it. Yeah. Well, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you started becoming a writer? Well, I've been writing for 30 years and I first started with kids books when our kids were little and then I wrote books for teenagers the Christy Miller series that kept going into the Sierra Jensen series for YA and then on to the Glenbrook series which were gentle love stories very hallmarky and then um, the Sister Chick series which were women in midlife having an adventure traveling around the world and then I started doing some nonfiction. and in the middle of all that I did a couple Christmas novellas Finding Father Christmas, Engaging Father Christmas, um, and then Kissing Father Christmas. And those are the ones that were big surprise picked up and made into three Hallmark Christmas movies for the Hallmark Movies and Mystery Channel. So um, I, I'm still writing and there's lots of novels that um, are, I'm still carrying on the characters from the Christy Miller series, but the characters are now all grown up. So I love storytelling and Melody and I've been friends for 20 years or more. So oh my gosh. I, would, wow. I would do anything. She and I actually went together to Frankfurt, to the Frankfurt Book Fair and had all kinds of adventures, nearly missed our train. We got oh, wow. <laughs> so when she texted me like 45 minutes ago, I said, hey, of course, Melody, for you, anything. Yeah. <laughs> So did you guys meet through like a, like a writing type of thing, conference, or how did you guys meet? She was actually working at the publishing house that was doing the Glenbrook novels. And oh, so okay. I was in for a business meeting and we met and she um, was just starting to write some children's books. And then she wrote um, Diary of a Teenage Girl. And there's several in that series. So we were both writing for that YA market and a couple times we got together and had writing retreats where we'd go away for the weekend and spend our time in isolation. And then we'd have dinner and talk about what we wrote and critique each other's work. Yeah. That sounds pretty- like an author's dream, like I know. writing retreats. <laughs> yeah. So did you grow up as a big reader uh, or were you the kind of kid that always had a sort of notepad where you're always writing? How did you first kind of get started? No, uh, I was just a storyteller. I was always telling stories and often getting in trouble because I was uh, told I was lying (laughs) or exaggerating or trying to draw too much attention to myself or going on and on and on. I remember many times at the dinner table, I got the, come on, wrap it up, wrap it up. (laughs) So it was just sort of in there and I didn't know it. I didn't have a teacher who drew it out of me. I didn't go to college. I was a communication major in college, but I didn't you know, explore journalism or anything, but it was after I was married and uh, be, right before we had kids and my husband kept saying, you, you just need to write something, articles or kids books or something because my imagination was always going. And so that's how I started with an article. It was actually published and then I was like, that's amazing. That was, that was, that was fun. I could do this again. And it just kept going from there. That's great. That's real exciting. Uh, so are, would you describe yourself as a pantser or a plotter when you write? Definitely a pantser, but I do <laughs> a couple months of more like not plotting, but a lot of marinating. I get binders and I put all the pieces in the binder that are just sort of, hmm, this 
person I'd cut out of a magazine looks like they could be this character. So I spent a lot of time just thinking about the story and the characters and my imagination before I actually sit down and write. And because it's so <laughs> character driven, I feel like I, I know these people, I know what they're going through. And so I'll just see what happens. Yeah. So you mentioned, um, so you wrote, you've written children's books and you've also written like teen books, like the Christy Miller series and then adult books. Do you have one that's a favorite that you like to write for a favorite audience or you just like the variety? Um, the variety has been interesting because some books I knew I needed to write and they weren't really that like, oh, I can't wait to write this, but it was that I have to, I have to do this. And one of them was um, my memoir, which is Victim of Grace. And that book just took a lot out of me. It took six years. Wow. And that's the one I hear the, the most, when, when I hear back from writers, who read Victim of Grace, because it goes over 20, 25 years of my writing journey, that's the one that they are most grateful for because it helps them understand the process. And when they're getting discouraged and they get to chapter whatever, and they go, wow, it really, what I'm experiencing is normal as a writer. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep going. So. so what was your first book that you had published? The first one was of uh, children's books, and it was a series of six books for toddlers called Billy and Bear. And the oh. publisher was so excited about it, they put out all six books at one time. I mean, I think there were 10 pages in the whole book. <laughs> Billy <laughs> yeah. Bear go to the grocery store with mommy. That's a whole page, you know. But then... Um, they made little stuffed teddy bears to go with it. So you get all six books and you get the little bear. It was pretty cute. That oh. sounds cute. Oh, yeah. um, my sister is a picture book author. Oh. Uh, so yeah, so she's done, I don't know, five or six picture books. And she's now, I think next year, I believe she's coming out with a um, graphic novel. So it's going to be very exciting uh, oh, for her. Yeah. Um, wow. But you can get along, you can get, you know, an agent, you can do, I mean, it's a, it's a, a, a pretty uh, interesting field doing those picture books. Yes. Yeah. A, a lot more work than people would think. Cause oh, yeah. maybe you only have eight words on a page, but you have to choose just the right eight words yeah. <laughs> you have to really be intentional about that. And then when I wrote some more Mrs. Rosie Posey books, there were four of those and they were for second grade reading levels. Well, then I had to learn what are all the spelling words that second mm -hmm. graders have to learn in a school year. Those are right. the words I need to use. And what's the pace? Like for someone learning to read because they were in the I can read franchise. So then I had to learn how children that age, how many words they could say before they had to take a breath. I mean, it's, there's a lot to it. Yeah. It takes a lot more time than you think. So mm -hmm. kudos to your sister. Yeah, uh, she's amaz amazing. Megan Wagner Lloyd is her name. She has, her first uh, book was called Finding Wild about finding nature uh, all over um, wherever you're at. Uh, so uh, so yeah, it's pretty it's been pretty exciting to to follow. Um, so how do you get your ideas for uh, your for your stories for your books? Uh, do they, you know, they, do they based on people, you know, or do you base on, you know, different stories, maybe other novels that you've read? How do you come up with your ideas? Usually I see a scene from the book in my imagination when I'm sitting and thinking, driving, in the shower, eating, having coffee with a friend, you know, there's just sort of like this sort of slow motion freeze frame moment that I think okay, I don't know what that is yet, but I'm going to pay attention to it. So I'm always writing things in my journal. And then I'll think about it. And, and there have been plenty of those butterfly thoughts that just go ahead and flit on away. <laughs> I don't, you know, not everyone is a gem, but the ones that really stick, there's something there. And I sort of explore with the, what, what's the problem? What's the emotion? What's the issue? Because you can't have fiction without friction so what's mm -hmm. the friction what's the issue there that has to be resolved even if the resolution is there's
there is no answer. That's, mm -hmm. that's really come to that conclusion. I've, I've gone these different ways. So when I was writing the Father Christmas books, they're actually set in England. And I was in England, and I just had this moment where I thought, wow, what if there was a woman who came to England at Christmas time, was trying to find her birth father? What would that be like? And then the story just sort of mm -hmm. rolled out from there. Yeah. Do you, do you base characters on people that you know, or do you try to avoid that? It's always a mix, where sometimes I will describe how a character laughs, and in my imagination, I can hear someone I know that that's the way they laugh. Mm -hmm. I try to describe it, but the, that character probably doesn't look at all like the, the person whose laugh I borrowed. You know, so it's this conglomeration of all the different pieces and that sense that I feel really comfortable with that character before I start writing so that I feel like I like I'm a friend telling that character's story. That's great. Yeah. That's really interesting. Especially if you're doing a, a series, uh, you must really get to kind of feel uh, like you know the character. Yes, which is why I'm still writing about Christy Miller because mm -hmm. <laughs> she feels so familiar. <laughs> she went from in the first book, she was 14. And in the book that just came out this year, she's 33. So oh. there aren't many, I've looked to try and find other authors that have kept their characters going that long to kind of see how long can we keep going here? Christine in the <laughs> nursing home, I don't know like how, how long it go. And there, just, there aren't that many that go through all those different life stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that's something that's, you know, really special and unique because in like, it's like you grow up with those characters if you follow their story because I think I was probably close to 14 when I first read Christy Miller and so yep. and then it feels like you're growing up right along with them. So that's kind of unique in a way. It is. I hear that a lot and it's really sweet because they feel like their imaginary friend is growing with them. So then when they, especially during the last six months where everybody was looking for Where's my favorite comfort food? Where's my favorite movie? Right. <laughs> and I heard from so many who said, I went in the box in the garage and I dug out my old Christy Miller books and then I saw that there were more and I've just been binging. And I just feel like I had this visit from an old friend who was saying, it's, okay, it's gonna be okay. And yeah. Like that, I love that. That's, that's why I wanna write. I wanna give that encouragement and hope. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to be careful if you put your family and stuff into books because they might read it and be like, wait a minute here. <laughs> you know, it's weird because there are people who are so sure that they are a character in the book. And when they tell me that, I think I, I never thought that, not even once. <laughs> but I don't tell them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but there's, it's such a mix. I don't, think that there's ever been this exact person matches even 20 percent with a character yeah interesting uh, so what do you think makes for a great in particular romance in a, in a book or in a movie i think there has to be that sense of longing fulfilled of i just want someone who understands me i'm looking for that soulmate. I, I want to feel that everything that has been part of my life story is for a purpose. So that that love story is more than just attraction, but it's that echo. So that mm -hmm. you feel like when I speak with this person, what comes back makes my heart happy. It feels like Yes, there's that deeper understanding. So those love stories that I think have really endured are those ones that as we're watching it, we feel, or reading the story, we feel a camaraderie and we feel like that, that's what I want. I want to be known and I want to, which, which is interesting. That's the title of my book that came out in April is Being Known. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I guess I, I'm, convinced of this <laughs> yeah it's on your <laughs> fresh on the mind huh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Have, have you found that this quarantine time has been a good time for you as a writer or have you had writer's block uh, or, or what's it been yeah, like for I, you? I, yeah, I haven't really struggled with writer's block that I remember, not, not in the traditional sense. There's pauses that I need to take just to get my emotional well filled back up so I can go back to a project. But um, I, I think the weirdness of this time put me in spaces where for a couple days, I just was sort of floaty and, you know, needed to um, get some routine because so many, so many rhythms and routines were let go or, or changed or hindered. Mm -hmm. So to get into the rhythm of writing, I had to, which no writer wants to be self-disciplined, but I kind of had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it really hurt or helped. I just took longer to get to where I needed to be on some deadlines. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know. Yeah, I think we all have, uh, you think you have all of this time, and so you should have all this creative energy, but like, I don't know, it's just been such a stressful time too that I don't think it's really quite worked out that way. Yep. One of my friends posted, you know how I always said when I had time, I'd write a novel? Well, I found out that time wasn't the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, so you've had one series for Hallmark, uh, the um, Finding Father movies. What was that like for you to have one of your books turned into a movie? Yeah, Hallmark. so the Finding, it's the three Finding Father Christmas are, the first one is Finding Father Christmas, and then Engaging Father Christmas, and then Marrying Father Christmas. And it was unexpected. It was one of those fun moments where my agent called and said, uh, Hallmark would like to make a movie out of your book. And from that call to when we actually got started was five years. So it was this excitement oh. Oh, wow. and nothing, yeah. nothing at all. Are they going to do it? Or are they not going to do it? Are they going to send a contract? Did they change their mind? What, you know, what's happening? But the, you know, kind of the fun backstory is that I thought I was just going to write one Christmas novella just for fun and be done. But mm -hmm. after I wrote it, the publisher said, could you write a second one and make this more in depth of what you started in the first one? Because novellas are so short. And so I wrote the second one and I just was really happy with it. I turned it in. I had a brand new editor and she said, no, it, it needs to be a love story. There wasn't a love story in the first one. So we really need a love story in the second one. I said, oh, okay. I, <laughs> I was just focusing on the main character. And so I rewrote and put the love story in there. I thought, okay, that's a sweet love story. Turned it in. The editor said, Oh dear, this is not at all what we want. We need to make a you know, like really sweet, deep love story, really put in all the emotions. I was like, okay. So I went back and for the third time rewrote the book. And I, I'm guessing, I don't remember for sure, but I, I would guess that my editor said, make it like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> you know, just to get the ideas going. So when I turned in the third one, she said, this is worse than the second one. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to stop. I went to my agent and said, I, someone figured out that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know how to write. I just kind of stumbled into this. I never really wanted to be like, it's all over. Forget those. I'd written 50 or 60 books already, but it was like, no, someone... I felt like, you know, the Wizard of Oz when Toto pulls the curtain back and he's going, yeah. pay no attention to him. <laughs> That's what it felt like. like. Just don't make any, you know, sense of this because it's, it's not going to work. So my agent said, just think about it for a day or two. And I realized that what I needed to do was finish, because again, that discipline 
I signed the contract. They paid me in advance. I just needed to be good on my word and say, okay, I will deliver. And I, I was so humbled out to just, you, they told me what they wanted. And so I wrote it that way. And I turned in the fourth version and I said, I don't ever want to see this book again. <laughs> I don't want to hear anything about it. I just, I'm just done. And um, they, I don't know that they were thrilled with it, but they were great. That's a love story. They published it. So full circle is when Hallmark took five years to decide. All they had read was Finding Father Christmas. And they were trying to figure out how to make it a love story. So they, they called my agent in the middle of that and said, well, we're not sure we can do it because there's no love story. And she said, oh, you want a love story? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me send you the second book. <laughs> and then when I did, they said, oh, we can take this and this and put it together. A screenwriter be really creative and we could write a whole story based on what is here. And that's when I realized, especially in this, profession as a writer that if you keep going and you do the hard work you don't know mm -hmm. you you can't just think that if it's not fun anymore you should give up or if you're not getting the affirmation that you want because it could be something bigger on the other end right that you get that reward because you showed up and did the work yeah. So yeah, I love that part of the story because there would not have been the adventure of going on set and being part of the whole process if I had just said, I give up. It's too hard. You people are killing me. Write your own book. You don't like mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. That's it. Perseverance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, and I think that we, we sometimes think that, uh, that it's, maybe easier to write sort of these uh, romantic books. You know, a lot of people think, oh, they're just, they, they'd be simple to write, but that's far from the truth. Uh, they're, they're, they're very tough uh, to get just that right dynamic and have the chemistry mm -hmm. and all of that stuff that makes it to make it work. Right. And also keep the ideas fresh after, mm -hmm. you know, so many books out there. Right. So Ian, was he not even a, is he not even a character in the um, Finding? in the first book? Well, Ian, the main hero, yeah. um, shows up on, I think, the second to the last page when the Whitcomb family is gathered around for dinner. Was it Christmas? I don't, I don't remember how it was in the book, but that he just sh shows up. And um, Miranda just says hi, and they have a little moment. It's in England. And so I think they did the little Christmas cracker, you know, you pull the ends and they have little crowns to put on their head and tell jokes. But it was just a very simple meet cute of, you know, and, and just that sense that Miranda then knew that this was her new home or these people had accepted her, or, you know, that the conclusion was that she was welcomed in. Mm -hmm. But then the second book was about let's bring Ian in and let's really make him part of mm -hmm. it and let's tell his backstory. So yeah, the mm -hmm. screenwriter just did a great job of giving a whole lot more that wasn't in any of the books, but had to kind of go with what was needed to make it a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that like for you to see your uh, book, uh, your books turned into a movie? It takes courage. I mean, you might not think that, but it takes courage because sure. you have to say, I don't even know who you people are. I've never met you. <laughs> and yeah. I just signed away everything in a 36 page contract. Mm -hmm. And I have no say. And these are my friends, my characters. Mm -hmm. my right. They're friends. your babies. <laughs> you take care of them. And I was delighted because the production team that I got to work with was really, uh, cohesive, the producer, the tag team directors, executive producers, the, it, it was just a lovely, lovely group to work with. So then they invited me to go on set and I could bring one person. So I brought my agent because she and I have been through so many <laughs> steps with this and she and I had 
a great time. We could only be there three days. And um, we, you know, our job was to be very quiet and small and try to <laughs> be in the corner and not disrupt anything. But I could tell just with the level of enthusiasm that was being put into the production, even though I didn't know how it was going to turn out, um, there was a lot of a lot of care. I felt like there was a lot of love and care put into my story, and I felt that. Mm -hmm. So then when we went on to the second one, we we're like old friends, and <laughs> we showed up on set. We had lots of hugs everywhere. And, um, there was just such a sense that, well, let's, let's work together and talk about this a little more. So by the third one, I got to be a little bit more um, up to speed on the process as they were going along. Mm -hmm. And I was just really happy with how the whole team put so much care into mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so you got to be on set for each one of the movies in? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so awesome. You can really see it from start to finish. And... Mm -hmm. Yes. Was Erin Krakow, was she kind of what you en envisioned for Miranda or something real dif really different? I thought she was Miranda. I thought even how I had described her in the book uh, when I went on set the first time and met Aaron, because I had not seen When Calls the Heart. I mean, this is what, five or six years ago. So maybe there had been one or two seasons already. And, um, but just right when I met her, I thought, oh, that's, that's how I had pictured Miranda, same age, same, you know, sort of just a, a lot of inner strength, but came across with this sort of gentle timidity. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really had fun getting to know her. My thing, I live in Hawaii. And so every oh. time I went on set, I brought chocolate covered macadamia nuts. So, oh man. <laughs> so, I'm so jealous you live in Hawaii. <laughs> oh. Everybody was you know, each the next year when I came, my suitcase was filled with little the little cans of the macadamia nuts and for the producer and the director and the lighting guys and the actors and, <laughs> and the wardrobe. And I bet yeah. they loved you. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time I was invited to go for the third year, I was like, I just I need a whole suitcase just yeah. <laughs> yeah. just for the treats. <laughs> just for the treats. <laughs> Well, how did you end up in uh, in Hawaii? Have you always lived there, or how? We have been here ten years, and uh -huh. my um, husband and I moved here after our kids were grown and out of the house and married. And there, um, well, actually, we lived here twenty five years ago, and our son was in third grade then. So we always knew we wanted to come back, and um, uh, it's it's a beautiful and unexpected story. I actually, I wrote about it in Victim of Grace because that's, this is what we always dreamed of, but the way it happened was not how we thought it would. But I love living here. It's yeah. <laughs> I've been to Oahu uh, yeah. a, a number of times. My grandparents used to have a house on the North Shore. Mm. Um, I haven't been since 2011, but I miss it so much. I love it there so much. Uh, I love everything about it, except for the cockroaches. That's the only thing I don't like. Everything else I like. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, the centipedes. Did you have North Shore centipedes? Oh, yeah. So, centipedes yeah and, the, is, and the termites are there. awful. <laughs> everything else is great. We have no snakes, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just everything. Even the food's delicious. It's mm -hmm. just so... I mean, I know it's different to live versus versus vacation, but... Still, I just, uh, I even, I love going to church there. Everybody's so cheerful yes. and, uh, and just, I don't know. I just love, I love being there. I wish I could go back, uh, but who knows how long it'll be before we can, yeah. you know, before we'll be able to travel yes. normally. We cannot even go inner Island now. If I was to go, we live on Maui. If I went to Oahu, I would have to quarantine for 14 days. Wow. Wow. Or I could come home. And when I came home, I'd have to quarantine 14 days. Wow. So <sighs> we'll we get really through it. Down. It's it's so interesting though because the water is 
so clear. Oh. And, you know, all the things that needed to happen to the environment without the deluge of the, you know, a lot of trash and a lot of sunscreen and a lot of things that really mm -hmm. hurt the, the reefs and the water. And without that, it's so beautiful how it's coming back. And, um, but yeah, we, but the economy is terrible because we are based on hospitality. So right. no hotels open, very few restaurants open. People don't have yeah. jobs. Oh, I hope that we're able to get a vaccine soon. Uh, yeah. and of course, we need it to be safe, of course, but uh, we, it's just, we, I'm, I'm very grateful for all the people working hard on uh, to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And you come back, Rachel. And then you come back and you eat at the restaurant. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> will. <laughs> I have my, my places on the North Shore that I love. Uh, Ted's Bakery, uh, yeah. for example. <laughs> uh, you, I just, I, there's, oh, it's so You know great. what? You, I think there's, it's only available now as an ebook, but I wrote a book about the North Shore called a kiss at Sunset Beach. Oh, no and way. Oh, bakery Sunset Beach. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ted's Bakery is in that book. So if you're just really homesick, you could read yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> book. <laughs> I mean, and I actually thought about doing some kind of travel this year. I actually even got my, not that you need a passport for Hawaii, but I got my passport. I, well, I submitted all the stuff in March because I thought, Maybe I'll go to England because both of my sisters live in England right now. And uh, maybe I'll go to England or maybe I'll do some kind of traveling. And then everything happened. <laughs> and yeah. I, uh, I finally actually got my passport <laughs> in August. It took that no, long. No, now. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I have this now. But uh, uh, maybe it gives Whoa. you hope. hope for the future, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we, we uh, maybe 20 uh 2021 maybe we'll be able to get out there and do that traveling because i i just i love hawaii so much it really i went there when i was uh in a really dark time in my life i was i had some pretty bad depression i was in a job that i just hated and and uh it it was just like the first time i had felt joy for a long oh. time and uh, i was just I, I have to re I have to replicate this in my life yeah. <laughs> as much as possible. You, know, you might and, end up moving here someday. You just never yeah. know. Never know. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I love the ocean. The ocean's so therapeutic. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. Well, um, we like to end our interviews with some fun, silly questions. And you've been such a good sport. Uh, so we have the holiday editions of the of the fun silly questions okay so all right what is your favorite holiday drink i like eggnog if it has lots of cinnamon but just like mm. a little glass of it and then it's like that's plenty mm -hmm. ah, that sounds good i usually put nutmeg on mine you like it yeah, with cinnamon I, huh? I, yeah i like it with cinnamon very good okay what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat sugar cookies Mm -hmm. that are the kind that are rolled and then have that decoration and that like the the sugar frosting is almost as thick as the cookie yes <laughs> so that first bite is like a 50 50 experience of what a rush <laughs> gotta have that icing <laughs> I, know. I love it that's perfect for a hallmark uh the they love a good a sugar cookie baking montage. <laughs> yes, they do. And you know, they have one in Finding Father Christmas where Aaron and oh. I had to, they were delivering Christmas baskets and they shared this cookie and we we all wanted, where did you get those cookies? We need those cookies. Give us those cookies. Right, <laughs> right, right. Cookies. Yes. Yeah. Good. They, they did have a pretty good uh, wood chopping scene in, <laughs> in uh, I think it was engaging Father Christmas when you get the now mater with the uh, the rage wood chopping. <laughs> I know, it's such. A, my, do you have you followed Annie Downs with her uh, Hallmark? What is it the the bingo? Like she has a bingo. Oh board. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like the, get to put your 
playing piece on the box where there's the wood chopping scene. And yep. <laughs> I mean, I guess at least it's a constructive way of getting out your anger. That's true. Yeah, you can you can be useful for the wood fireplace. You can all <laughs> That's right. But I might be careful with wielding an axe if I'm if I'm upset. If I'm angry. <laughs> Don't let it go. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? I love Oh Holy Night. Mm -hmm. My favorite. Yeah. Absolute favorite. One. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite classic Christmas movie? Christmas. Um, a, a Christmas Story. Charles Dickens. A Christmas Story. And, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, A Christmas Carol. Yeah. A yeah. Christmas Carol. Because mm -hmm. that was part of the inspiration mm -hmm. with the Finding Father Christmas movies, just remember, so that oh, yeah. they were putting on the play of A Christmas Carol. Why did I say Christmas story? Oh, because the other Christmas story, you always hear that one. But yeah. the, the um, just that line in there, and that was one of the things when I was in England and I had visited Charles Dickens' home and oh, was wow. thinking about a Christmas movie. And there's a line where um, the, the ghost of Christmas present says, come in, come in and know me better, man. And I, I love that, just how we, again, it's a love story. We want to be known. We want to be welcomed in. We want to be included. And for that scene, so here's a funny thing. I, I have not yet read A Christmas Carol, but um, my favorite is the Muppet version. Okay, I was going to ask you what's your favorite version. <laughs> I remember there's this grand jolly Santa, yeah. Father Christmas, and he's saying, come in, come in, and know me better, man. Yeah. I love that version as well. I like the songs and, and, uh, the mice. Uh, I love the mice. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite Christmas Carol Jess version? Um, off the top of my head. Yeah. I'm I, like drawing a blank on Christmas oh, carols right now. I, I really, I mean, I love, I love all the different versions for the most part. Um, but I, I really do also like the Mickey one. If you're going for ones for, for kids, I think Mickey's Christmas Carol is a lot of fun. And yeah. uh, uh, I mean, there's so many good ones. So many yeah. good ones. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, do you have a favorite holiday tradition that you look forward to every year? Over the years, it has changed, but one of them has been Christmas caroling and mm -hmm. being with our kids and getting the hot chocolate. And, you know, when our, our daughter lived here with her husband soon after they were first married and they had their first baby here. And so we would go out and, you know, Christmas in Hawaii is kind of warm. So you're still in shorts, maybe a long sleeve shirt, windows open, top down you're just singing and driving around. It's a very different <laughs> Christmas carol feel than going door to door all bundled up. But it's still, I still love it. It still is that mm -hmm. we just have to sing. We just have to be joyful. Yeah. Be joyful. Yeah. yeah, they don't use caroling as much as they should in the Hallmark movies. I know it's probably because of music rights and stuff like that mm -hmm. and make it hard, but... Uh, I can't remember if there's any caroling in any of those finding movies, but um, uh, the, yeah, there. I was feeling like there was. Is it in the second one or the third one, or maybe all of them? I I can't all, remember. I I'm pretty sure all of them because um, I remember talking to some of the extras, and what they did is they had them dressed in sort of Victorian mm -hmm. apparel, so that they were more like these holding candles and singing. It was really that old world kind of feel yeah interesting that yeah i think it works it's a nice thing to have in a in a christmas movie is the caroling it gives them something different to do aside from ice skating uh so all right very good uh do you have a memorable christmas gift that you either gave or received like your red rider bb oh. gun kind of moment <laughs> <laughs> see that was the other movie that was stuck in my yeah <laughs> um I cannot think of one. Yeah. 
That's all right. We we can we can we can move forward. Um, all right, you kind of already answered this one, but uh, but would you pick Scrooge or the Grinch? Scrooge. Yes. <laughs> okay. Very good. You wouldn't know what to do if I had to oh the Grinch. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, would you pick clear lights or colored? Clear always. Okay. Like when it's like twinkle stars. And, and you don't have this as much in Hawaii, uh, but snowball fight or or build a snowman? Um, equal. It's 50-50 on both. Because <laughs> it's just sort of in my imagination at this point. <laughs> build the snowman and have the fight after. You get the best yeah, of both. You <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, the one advantage of doing the snowball fight is you don't need that much snow. Whereas like, to build a snowman, you need a pretty thick. Pretty good snowball. Be a, yeah, it needs to be a good snowfall. Um, so all right. You, now here's a tip, Rachel. If you come the next time you come to Hawaii, if you come at Christmas time and you go to the beach, you will see lots of snowmen made out of sand. That's right. <laughs> it is like with the wet sand and they're just little. Oh yeah. But then they they pack them up, so you're all on the beach. It's kind of a fun thing. And then the you know Santa comes in on a canoe. It's just it happens. Nice. <laughs> oh, that sounds. That sounds nice. I mean, there was one last year. There was a uh, Christmas movie. Mm, oh, what was it called? There was a Christmas movie filmed in uh, Hawaii last year on ABC. Um, oh, I missed it. That would have been fun. Uh, yeah. Um, it, uh, what's it called? Um, anyway, it had Leah Michelle in it. There's so many Christmas movies. <laughs> Sorry, it's called "Same Time Next Christmas." Oh, that was filmed in Hawaii last year, and I do think Hawaii was probably the best thing about it. But it, it's harmless. <laughs> you should check it out. Oh, um, <laughs> see, it was kind of refreshing and a change of movie of... critique. It was harmless. <laughs> yeah, it, it was refreshing to have a different uh, setting. So that was nice because you almost never get warm climates in a That's true. in Christmas movie. Uh, all right. So, would you describe yourself as a good gift wrapper or not? Pretty good. Uh, scale of one to ten, about a seven. But my daughter's superb. So <laughs> yeah, she'd probably say a three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do, I do like those bags. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bags save so much time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they make us all look like pros. All right. Last question. Probably not since you're in Hawaii, but uh, do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? I do, and I've had it forever, <laughs> and um, it has a Christmas tree on it with all the ornaments, and then at the end, at the base of the Christmas tree, there's a little gift box, and if you push the box, it plays a little Christmas, like, music <laughs> box song, <laughs> but it, it's, it's been in the back of the closet for quite some time, so I don't know if the music box button still works but i kept the sweater hmm. i don't know why <laughs> so many memories it's probably been the bugs have probably found it by now yeah. <laughs> wow very good you passed the test here you can keep writing christmas books <laughs> <It's exciting. laughs> well, but i just you know what everybody read melody carlson's christmas books they are delightful everybody yeah watch Melody Carlson's Hallmark movies. They are delightful. And just follow Melody Carlson. She's delightful. I endorse <laughs> Melody Carlson. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thanks and for listening to us talk. You we're looking for Melody, but she'll be and here. We, and we we will try again to have Melody on and but you are a number one friend in my book for for being there for yeah. her and that is amazing uh so that's really impressive and uh are you online as far as social media or anything like that yes so my pen name is Robin Jones Gunn because my daddy told me I had to keep my maiden name because <laughs> he wanted <laughs> credit or something but um you can either find me Robin Gunn, G-U-N-N, -N, or Robin Jones Gunn. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff. Yeah. 
Great. Well, thank you so much for doing yes, this. This was you. very sweet of you. Very Ooh. nice. Both are just so easy to talk to. Thank it you. Was, it was a lot <laughs> I had of a little fun. butterflies right at first. Like, I don't know. What to, but oh, you, did, you, you crushed it. You did great. Uh, so, uh, Jess, uh, where can people find you? You can find me um, on Twitter and Instagram at JessBSWBlog or check out my website, BeneathStillWaters.com. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And make sure you're following the podcast, The Hallmarkies Pod, and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media, and on iTunes and YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate it. And if you 